Hey guys, welcome back to Timber Time Outdoors. In this video, we're gonna talk about loaders. We're gonna talk about loader smoothness. And this is a follow-up to my previous video about my loader problems. So stay with us, guys. Hey now, take a step outside and seize the day now. All right. So, as you can see, I've got the B2601 back from the dealership. So if you watched my previous video, which I'll link here, um, yeah, I brought, I brought my tractor in to get fixed. I've been having some problems with my loader. Um, it, it basically sticks when it shouldn't. I pull back on the stick, it'll rise up and then just stop. And uh, it's been a very difficult problem to figure out. Um, so just some, some brief background. I've had this tractor for about a year. Um, this problem has existed for almost the entire time. Um, I have some video which I'll reference throughout here that shows the problem. Um, it ha first happened last winter. I got this in December and you know I've, I've been talking to the dealership. It's been one of those things where I brought it in, they can't repeat it, they send it back. Um, and so I'm really frustrated with the loader on this tractor. I love the tractor aside from that and it has nothing to do with the strength of this loader. This loader is plenty strong. It just 100% has to do with the smoothness and the control. And, uh, and so in this video, we are going to talk about uh, the previous problem briefly. We're gonna talk about what the dealer did for me or what they didn't do for me. Um, we're gonna talk about two things that they showed me that I think is very important for new tractor owners to understand and maybe even older tractor owners or existing experienced tractor owners. I didn't know this was a problem with third functionality and hydraulics. Um, not that I'm, you know, Mr. Tractor Expert, but um, it was something that I learned that I'm gonna share. It's two things actually that I think will be very helpful. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about where do I go from here with this? Okay, so what is the problem? I'm going to overlay some video throughout this chit chat so you can kind of see what's going on. But essentially what happens is I pull back on the stick and the loader will raise up and then just stop. It has nothing to do with, you know, moving and curling and do, doing too many hydraulic operations at one time. That is also a problem with tractors and, it, and smaller tractors in particular. If you try to do too much, the hydraulics, there just isn't enough flow. That isn't what is happening with this particular tractor. In the videos that I'll overlay here, you can see I'm just sitting still. I'm raising the loader and it's stopping. And um, I don't know if it has something to do with the valve. It's the way I'm moving the stick. I'm going to show you something with the third function buttons in just a second. But th that's essentially what the problem was. I brought it in basically for the last time. And the dealer is, is saying there's nothing wrong with this tractor. This is how this tractor works. Um, I don't know if I buy that 100%, but um, I do want to talk about the, the things that they did show me. It has to do with a third function valve. So let's do that. All right, let's talk a little bit about third function valves. By the way, guys, thanks for all the comments. There was a lot of great suggestions on what could possibly be wrong with this tractor. Um, I will say that, you know, just in general, the, the loader is super strong, but it's it's very jerky. Um, and I think others that have this tractor would agree that it could be smoother. Um, and I think it is a function of the small tractor. Very powerful, but hard to be super smooth with it. And my expectations are kind of high because we have another tractor that's much larger, very smooth. And so part of this is managing my own expectations. But I wanted to just thank you guys again for all the comments. Um, some of you guys should be in service because I think you would have done a better job than my dealer did. Because like I said, they just said, there's nothing wrong, see you later. 
So I'm not super happy with them. But anyway, let's talk about third function valves. This one happens to be the Land Pride. And um, there's a unique feature with the Land Pride that might be a good thing or a bad thing. It's something that I didn't totally understand when I had this tractor. I actually made this decision based on what we had on our MX-5800. It's a Land Pride just like this, so I wanted the same control on both tractors. So when I go from one to the other, it's very easy. Maybe a bad decision on my part, and I'll tell you why. Okay, so Land Pride. Um, these buttons here are live all the time, so they're always on. Um, some third function valves, like the Kubota branded um, third function valve, and there are some other aftermarket ones, they actually have a separate button that turns the third function on and off. And that's important um, for this reason. If you grab this stick and you pull back and raise the loader and then push one of these buttons, it will stop the loader because it's diverting the hydraulics from the boom arms to the third function or the, you know, the third function valve out in the boom. Okay, so it's just diverting hydraulics. So in the videos that I've shown, it's possible I have gloves on, I could be hitting these buttons inadvertently. It does, it's very hard to tell. Um, and so keep that in mind when you're buying a third function you need to understand that that once you turn these valves on or with this one they're live it's going to divert the hydraulics and so to raise curl and and grip at the same time probably isn't going to happen because it's diverting the hydraulics from one thing to the other so that's the first thing they told me and that is true um, i can prove it on this tractor over and over and over um, i have a friend who has an l3901 with this third function valve he can do it every time on his as well so i assume it's it is a, a true statement that they're making to me about third function valves um, in the future if i change out tractors which i'm going to talk about i will probably go with one where i have a separate button that i can turn that on and off now that i understand that um, i really like the kubota branded one for some other reasons it's got some hard lines, which I think are better protection. Um, your, your valve itself is protected with a metal shroud. It does cost a lot more, and they're hard to get, but I think it might be worth it getting that Kubota branded third function valve. So that was the first thing that the dealership told me. The second thing that they told me um, has to do with um, curling and raising at the same time. So let's look at the front of the tractor, and I'll go over that. Okay, the second thing that the dealer told me that is not possible um, with most tractors is that you can't, you can't deadhead the curl and raise at the same time. Okay, so here's what they mean by that. And I'll overlay a video that shows it. So you, you curl all the way back until it stops. That's called deadheading. It stops. And then if you want to raise it at the same time, so what that means is you, you take the stick and go this way until it deadheads and then back or go at an angle the hydraulics again are going to get confused and it's, it's going to either be really slow or it's going to stop completely um, in the videos that i show the problem that's clearly not happening but you can make that you can repeat that but it's clearly not happening to me because you can see it um, with the the bucket level indicator the bucket is level and i'm not trying to curl it at all in those videos so even though that was a nice tip that they told me about um, it's not something that that i'm doing i think that's more of a safety thing actually because if you had it curled all the way back and you raised it all the way up you could dump that load right on top of you so i think that's why they do that um, so so those two things are the are the I guess the reasons that they're telling me this tractor isn't broken is that they think I'm either hitting the button inadvertently or I'm deadheading it. I don't know. I just don't buy the argument. I still feel like this, tr this particular tractor has a problem. I don't think it's a problem with most um, small tractors, what I'm experiencing, but just be aware these other two problems do exist. Okay, so that's all well and great. We learned something about tractors. The bottom line is I got a tractor I'm not happy with. Um, I could take it to another dealer and see if they can fix it. What's very likely to happen is I'm probably going to trade it in. 
Um, it's not going to happen anytime soon because there isn't anything to buy. Thank you, supply chain problems. Um, but, you know, I don't know how to get over this other than to accept the issue. But I was uh, using the tractor um, earlier today. It's, it's still making, you know, it's inadvertently happening. It's driving me crazy, actually. And so I think I'm going to trade it in. Um, you know, I could go up to an L maybe, but that's a big tractor. It's heavy. You know, I have a very small property here. I don't want to wreck my lawn. I'm kind of weird about that. And so the only other option really is an LX. Um, GP Outdoors, I don't know if you guys watch his channel, uh, Gord, Gord Potter. He is awesome. And it's called GP Outdoors. He actually had this tractor um, for like three years. And he went to an LX 2610. And he's got the cab. And the, the reason I mentioned the cab, well, two reasons, cabs are super awesome, right? Everybody ends up in a cab anyways. But he talks about the loader smoothness. He actually called me, which I thought was amazing. Um, he talks about the loader smoothness being very uh, much improved in the cab over the open station. So he did some test drives and whatnot. And we don't know why. It's the same valve, but it does have a different stick. I don't know. You know, that's a lot of money, $8,000 to go to a cab. But if it solves my loader problem, it might be worth it. So I'm looking at that. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, I'm pretty happy with this tractor other than the smoothness. We're going to cut firewood with it. We're going to do lots of work with it. I would not let this video discourage you from buying this tractor. I think my problem is isolated. In the previous video I talked about, um, this is a COVID tractor. It was, it was built in 2021. You know, anything built in 2021 is... A little sketchy so so anyway guys hopefully you learned something um, I certainly learned something from this process and uh, hopefully you can use this in your your tractor uh, purchase or or uses of a, of a tractor so let's wrap this video up thanks for watching guys um, like subscribe send to your friends and remember everybody keep it in the timber bye bye